is Rick Holm, and he's our Prairie Doc today. That's he does many other things, but today he's the Prairie Doc. He's yeah. here, and he wants to answer your questions of a medical nature. Dr. Holm is really happy whenever a call comes in. So give us a call, whatever might be on your mind of a medical nature. The reason he can answer all your questions is because his specialty is internal medicine. He's a primary care physician with the Avira Medical Group Brookings, and he's also a clinical professor at the University of South Dakota Sanford School of Medicine. And he sails on weekends. I was just thinking, you know, I think I know why Dr. Holm is so drawn to sailing. Because it really <laughs> exemplifies all of his strengths. Sailing involves a lot of healing. There's sunburn, there's throat burn, there's <laughs> yeah, mosquito yeah, bites, yeah, yeah. there's a risk of drowning, right? Yeah. Absolutely okay. correct. And you, Chiggers. And you, Chiggers. Sing, you sing sailor songs, they're rousing. <laughs> there you go. And there's sand fleas and there's chiggers <laughs> and and sti and jellyfish bites. You see? Oh yeah, jellyfish. Are you with bites. me? Oh, I've been. See, I've been bitten this by is jellyfish. why he's okay. comfortable sailing. It it fulfills, it fulfills all of that his medical roles. role. Yes. Yes. All of his roles. So we're happy you, to have you here, Doctor. Of course, Holm. you know that there is a uh, Ponset Regatta. If you've been listening at all, I actually I got a call from Clark Perkins this morning. He said, "Rick, there is this." Eighteen men on a dead team <laughs> turn in the yeah. bottom of the oh, oh, yeah. oh, oh. I've been playing sailor songs and dishes for you all morning. <laughs> what a guy! What a guy! Bob, you've been promoting us. Thank you so much for that. You know, it's going to be a celebration of wind and nature and beauty and sun and um, summer uh, this this weekend, eleven o'clock. Uh, on uh, at Pier 81. I love the word regatta. If I were to have another child, I would name her regatta. regatta? It is a beautiful name. It is it's a pretty it's name. an old Italian word, and it means to fight or to challenge. Oh, and really? The, and then the British took it, and, and they and they affixed it then to ships or boats or anything. Not How about that? So there you go. I, I have just purchased uh, maybe four or five books on sailing, the history of sailing, because... I'm going to write a novel one of these days. You know how you, you've got it. I've got a plan. Sure, you it. have something else to I'm, do. I'm writing a book right now called How to Care for Your Elderly Parents. And it should be done in a year, I think, or less than a year, hopefully. Uh, and maybe it'll be, uh, you know, in a national way. Maybe not. We'll see if it's picked up. I'm writing the, the book uh, proposal. Uh, but after that, I'm going to write a novel, and one of the uh, stories, there are going to be three physician stories. The first one is a, a 1400s uh, a Mediterranean youth who gets caught in a, in, a, uh, in a storm on the Mediterranean and then ends up uh, at the port of Italy that is the beginning of the school, the first school of medicine. And uh, there, uh, the books of of, um, of the Greek uh, physicians and Hippocrates and that school of thinking had been lost and then had been saved actually by the Arab, uh, Arabian uh, doctors who had them and changed them into uh, Arabic and then added 100 or 200 years of their wisdom and then were translated by uh, a, uh, a black uh, monk who knew Arabic but also knew Greek and Latin, and he tr and he was in that um, that particular uh, library in Salerno where there was a monastery uh, where all of the books were saved, and they just happened to have these undecipherable Arabic uh, texts that they had found on an Arabic wrecked Arabic boat Ship or something, or something whoever right? yeah. and uh, he translated them and they went oh my gosh these are the lost Greek texts of medicine uh, subsequently people started coming there to learn medicine that had been preserved and also translated and added to by the Arabs. So the first major modern western school of medicine was in Salerno. Salerno, Italy. That's interesting. And I'm going to go there uh, and study this. <laughs> but um, the, the Did you notice story, how it ties into sailing too? The, the you caught that. Story, <laughs> yeah. The story is going to be uh, of a, the, a medical school student who, uh, who went to this first school of medicine. And of course, there'll be a love story and all that in there. Of course, I there will. the perfect job. What's the perfect job? He would him? have, uh, he would be in Venice. Rolling yes. the gondolas and right. singing. When the moon hits the horizon, he'll be perfect. Yeah. Don't no, he'll go. 
No, um, but anyway, that's that. We're gonna uh, there'll, there'll be a story there, but the the book is interesting. And then after we come back from the break, I want to tell you about the research protocol that we're looking, and we'll be inviting people to, um, and we'll hear more about that in uh, weeks to come. But I want to get the people to know what I'll be doing in my new role. Well, we absolutely realize the man does not retire. On that note, we'll be back in a few minutes. have you here today. Dr. Holm is ready to answer any questions you might have of a medical nature. And if you haven't called him in yet, he's going to talk about his research. So sure. tell us about your newest project now that for some people may not be aware that Dr. Holm is retiring from active medical practice. Is that correct? Right. Uh, is there they, a date for that retirement? Well, July 1, really. July 1. This month. What okay. they, they, we've got three doctors in the clinic that aren't quite full. There's a new uh, internist, uh, Dr. Evans, who is, I think, the chief resident at Denver. I mean, really a highfalutin woman um, who is uh, Just Kelly happened Evans. to grow up in Brookings, too, Just right? Just happened to yeah. grow up in Brookings. It's coming back. And they're going to be doing outpatient medicine. The hospitalist program has started, so a lot of the jobs that people were doing may be lessened by the, the burden of the, uh, by, uh, by the hospitalist program. And so they're looking to be busier, and gee, I have this big practice, so that's going to go to, to the new doctors. And I think that's only fair. But, but you uh, are continuing in medicine. Said, and you're, and yeah. We'd like you to do something about patient education, and they're, they're gonna, they have a role for me, I think, as a spokesperson for uh, the, uh, the system wide, wider. I don't know whether that'll pan out or not, but it, Lindsay Myers, who used to be the, the host for our television show is the person uh, that's setting that up at, at a, in Avera and uh, Sioux Falls. But I'm going to be doing a research project with Bonnie Specker and Teresa Binkley at SDSU. And right now we are working on uh, getting the uh, Institutional Review Board to accept it. It's going to be a free project uh, for those involved. Uh, however, Every week, each person is going to be asked to see if there's a problem or if there's anything that I can do to help them. And if there is some kind of medical knowledge that would be provided for them that's, that's uh, billable, reasonable, and fair to everybody involved, I would, I would bill in that manner if I can help people. But I need to re be responsible to make sure that nothing's changing and people aren't deteriorating and there isn't a problem brought on by our program. So that's how that will go. Now... What is it going to be? It's going to be eventually 200 people, and we will. They will be uh, uh, people who are uh, overweight and or greater than 65 years of age. So we're looking at uh, an older population or an overweight population, and we are going to put them into one of two programs so that we can compare the programs. Our um, our guinea pig group is the one who will receive an extra amount of uh, um, extra amount of exercise strengthening exercise program uh, both groups will receive the dietary uh, education a lot of that'll be uh, talking about uh, the kind of the proper foods and uh, taking a diet diary and analyzing what you do eat and what you could do to change and addressing diabetic concerns in particular and then the exercise would be that group one, the control, 
will walk five days a week and will do whatever we can to encourage them to do that. And the intervention group is going to be walking two days a week and strengthening uh, three days a week. And the strengthening will be established, uh, will be the program established by a variety of, uh, right now, German researchers that have developed a program they think is the, the most important exercise to prevent falling. And uh, some of that is, you know, walking forward or backwards is one set of muscles, but moving sideways uh, either way is another set. And those muscles si seem to be, or can be, not worked uh, strong enough. So uh, if we can strengthen people's sideways muscles, then maybe we'll prevent falls and improve their uh, overall well-being. And it'll be a comparison between groups. Now, there was a study that just came out uh, that was published in the, uh, and a physician friend of mine who I was describing this to sent this to me about the fact that uh, strengthening a, uh, is better than walking alone. But, you know, that what is that strengthening and uh, how do you facilitate it? And can you really bring this to a group? Uh, this will be group therapy, so we'll have like 12 or more in the group each group, and we'll spend, you know, an hour together talking about diet and exercise. And, uh, you know, um, I think uh, that if you look at the things that make a difference in people's lives, all the pills are one thing, but nothing holds a candle to diet and exercise, really. And if you can, either group is going to win on this, if they can actually find themselves encouraged to do the right thing. So the two separate groups, if you, when you separate them, one will be doing everything in the program and walking, and the other will be doing the whole program, dietary discussion with you, walking, walking and strengthening. And, and strengthening. then you try to see, will it be a one year, or you don't know how many well, years? What we'll do is we're going to uh, run them through Teresa Binkley's bus, where we'll measure the fat amount on their muscles and their strength, and how can they squeeze it. Uh, um, a squeezing so there'll be a measurement, measurement when they begin. They'll get a measurement when they begin, and there'll be a measurement when they get done in three months. Oh, three months. And program. then there'll right. be a measurement at six months. Uh, so there'll be three measurements. My thinking is there'll be a measurement at a year too, and uh, and part of it is going to be can you sustain this? And people will be entering at different times, so that we we're, we're going to do 12, 12 weeks of program and then repeat it and then repeat it. So it'll it'll be a repeating thing until we get the 200 people done. Now, I think this is very interesting to our listening audience and I'm sure some of them would like to be part of it. Do they, do you have any way for them to sign up now or to find out more about it? Call the clinic and leave a message for Danelle Brown, my nurse. D A N E Dan L E L L E Brown. Danelle Brown, and leave a message and say, I'm interested. I can't guarantee you you'll get in. I think you will. It's first come, first serve kind of a thing. Um, and uh, all you need to be is greater than a BMI of 30, which is not that heavy, and greater than 65 years of age. So if you're not overweight and you're over 65, you're I mean, good, even you're if good. you're slender, you're still fine. And you know, It doesn't have to be overweight. It's just trying to keep probably help overweight people, but also help an elderly population, right? I think if you're frail, that's going to be the people who will benefit the most, will show the best benefits in that group. If you're not frail, uh, one day you will be. <laughs> and this is <laughs> this going could to help prevent, prevent that. Right. Okay. So, I mean, what we're trying to do is a research protocol that nobody is a loser. Everybody gets the benefit. When, the, when you're done, and if you were in group A that just had walking, you will get the exercises uh, to follow. And, and my sense is we may end up adding that to the protocol. Uh, you know, Do you have a name yet for the study? I'm, I'm thinking it will be um, for me. F, uh, for, the, the number for, and e, uh, M-E, for me, which would uh, stand for 4M, muscles making more movement. Great and, idea. And, and, and uh, dietary education. So for me, right? Okay, the well. For me program. For I, like, I like the name. It really, for me. And it's catchy. You'll remember it. But if you're interested at all in joining this program or seeing more about it, 
You can call the Avera Medical Clinic Brookings right here in town, ask for Danelle Brown, and tell her you're interested in Dr. Holmes' For Me program. We're going to take a break. Be right back. Radio. We're happy to have you listening today. We appreciate the calls that came in, and we just had a woman call in with a question about a prescribed pill by her doctor. The doctor prescribed one probiotic orally and one pill vaginally. Why can't she just take the two by mouth? Yeah. <laughs> Be easier. <laughs> okay. Right, but it doesn't make it, you know, there's some debate about any of these uh probiotics taken orally because your stomach it should be fighting like crazy to kill anything that would be alive so that you have a buy into stomach acids and so on and so forth. Now one would argue, oh, but I'm on um, uh, pro, uh, Trilisec or Omeprazole or one of the stomach things that takes, takes the acid out. And, <clears throat> and granted, that may well be uh, enhance the probiotic. I don't know if that question has ever been a answered by any research. It probably is being done now. I'm not going to do that research. Okay. But I would say this, that, um, that the studies suggest that even though the stomach has some acid and all those things, the probiotics taken orally help carry w to the whole body uh, the, the, uh, the material. However, the biggest problem with people who have uh, vaginitis is that they don't have the normal flora in their vagina, partly because they've been on antibiotics, partly because they have, they're in this sterile world of ours that is not as, as um, uh, germ-ridden as, as it used to may be. have been right. when we germ were kids. Germ-ridden would be the right Germ-ridden when we were kids, yeah. right? Yeah, I mean, yeah. Uh, well, we're, we're a cleaner environment now because of that. Too clean. Yeah. And the result is that we don't have the normal flora that we need sometimes, particularly in the vagina. And so um, my, my recommendation is that you follow through and use one tablet in the vagina. And just, you know, if you can't do it, try to tell your doctor. And actually, if you absolutely refuse to and you can't, take it orally then. Um, it's interesting. Uh, one of my favorite ecologist friends is, a, is Emil Redfish who is a PA from, and also the mayor of Arlington. You know, a heartier, caring, loving uh, man, I don't know. Uh, he was, I, I just don't, I know, a, a more caring person than, than Amo. And he was the original Indian medicine man. He learned all that stuff from his grandmother, you know, the Native American stuff. He learned all that. And then... On top of that, he went to PA school, and, and then on top of that, he and I have been partners working for a thousand years together, and so, I mean, he is a knowledgeable man in um, the herbal standard medicines. medicines and herbal medicines. And so what is he doing? He's into the probiotics. I mean, he, he, he just takes a probiotic like nobody's business, and he is... Um, he believes that uh, if we can avoid the things that uh, have been messed with uh, uh, and, and allow nature's natural non funds what was your word again when we were talking about? Bug infested? No, germ infested. Germ infested, germ infested world. World. We need to be exposed to the germs and they will protect us in many ways. Uh, not to say that uh, there isn't a place for antibiotics and a time for antibiotics. For those that, that aren't familiar with probiotics, they have just been, probably the past 20 years, you hear more about probiotics. And probiotics are often taken for people to settle their stomach. But what other reasons? Well, uh, vaginitis is another All one. Right. And certainly uh, the biggest reason is the overgrowth of, bac of bad bacteria in the colon. Uh, people who take antibiotics, 
uh, orally many uh, times, you know, 10%, 5% of the time, can get an overgrowth of C. difficile infection in particular, one organism that we are aware of, it doesn't mean it's the only one, that invades the colon when we've wiped out our normal protective flora. And this particular bacteria, C. difficile, overgrowth, is a dangerous weed. It's like killing this, the grass on your, in your yard and what comes in but a bad weed. Well, this is a, this is a horrendous, uh, life-threatening uh, weed. People die from C. difficile infections of the colon. And um, we've come to the realization you get sick from it so bad that you, you're st stuck and you're chronically very, very ill from it and it's threatening your life. And now they're getting to a point where they're doing colon transplants, which is fecal transplants, which is that you're getting an enema from somebody else's feca fecal material that is a normal flora to try to reestablish your own fecal flora, which is part of what keeps us healthy. And it may be that probiotics reestablish it. Probiotics have been shown to prevent the C. difficile infec okay. infections. Okay. So that would, thank you for bringing back to the, the beginning of the whole story that, that this is a, uh, a uh, possible help. Uh, um, the biggest help is not to use antibiotics unless you absolutely need them. You know, I started using probiotic about a year ago. I knew oh, I was going do. to be taking a number of trips, and I had thought, you know, if you're traveling overseas, um, you just you don't know what you're exposed to. Maybe the probiotic would help. And so it's an over-the-counter. Bought them. Just take one a day. The amazing thing for me is, for many years, I I uh, I would use Prilosec or Tums, anything. My stomach was almost always gurgling. I don't know why, but it just did. Settled it cleared down. up. Unbelievable. I had, I am so pleased on the probiotic. I feel healthier, and I don't have any of those stomach upsets I used to have. So, uh, you know, it isn't, uh, we don't, you know, it's right now it's a supplement, quote, unquote. So It's you an anecdotal, so you don't, you don't <laughs> have a standard. Evidence. We haven't right. been proven that you actually get the lactobacillus in this one, but there is a brand, BioGia, which uh, Dr. Goodbongen is, who is the world's expert in vaginitis and has done major research in this, actually, while he was in his training. Uh, he, he's the one who promotes one biogia by mouth and one by vagina okay. in people who've had problems there. I, you know, uh, my, also, my, uh, my thought is that it's the lactobacillus. Uh, there was a medical letter review on the, the value of which, which probiotic do you use? Do you need the mixture of this or that? Do you need the... And I think for the most part, people are saying, we don't know, but at least the lactobacillus, which is variable in cost. I would probably go to uh, a middle cost one or a standard one that has... Uh, there's a certain way of, of looking at quality standards. Ask the pharmacist on And they on can be helpful. They'll, mm -hmm. they'll tell they'll you They'll help you it. on that. So there's a you... way of saying this... This supplement is uh, proven and has been uh, reviewed and is carefully monitored by a reviewing organization. Well, I found it very helpful for myself. Maybe it will help some of our audience. We need to take our final break. We'll be back right after these words. We've run out of time. I don't know. Radio. We have just a few minutes remaining, and Dr. Holm just said there, he wanted to mention something about church. So, so there. This t this morning, I was reviewing the JAMA uh, Internal Medicine JAMA article that came out this week on uh, people who attend church and life uh, 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 longevity. And apparently there is a 30, and I can't give you the, what does this number mean, but the, it, there is a 33% reduced death rate in the people who attend church. So they looked at the possible reasons why this might occur.
cheaper. One of them is they smoke less because smoking is a risk factor. Uh, another is they, they have community interaction. They have people that are supportive. They have support people to talk to and to interact, with whom to interact. And, and so there is that whole value of community connectedness that people say is so important. And then there's this unknown thing about spirituality. I will say this, that the Mayo Clinic did a review on physician burnout. And one of the uh, things that they talked about is um, communi communi uh, communication between people, this connectedness between groups uh, that you do at church, whether there's a spiritual part or not. I mean, this connectedness. You have a club of people go sailing. You know, that's a, another connected. connectedness. Right. Friends that you, you, you know are friends that you care about, they care about you. They watch over you, you watch over them. But the spirituality is another component. And uh, that is, uh, comes through time and time again when they're looking at people who are facing tough times, pa facing stress of life, which is everybody's life, unless you're dead. Everybody faces a significant amount of stress. And um, that spirituality, whatever that may be, whichever church you go to, it doesn't matter. It seems to be the spirituality of a major religion. Um, and so, and, and, you, and by the way, I want to just say, shout out to the Muslims who are going through Ramadan right now. A friend of mine, a patient of mine, is starting Ramadan. The month Ramadan, of Ramadan. Ramadan. Right. And it's a period of time where they don't eat during the day, and then they have a feast every night. So it's a fasting month for them. And it's a very spiritual time for them. And he was just thrilled. And, and what thrilled him more was that I was willing to talk to him about it, that I, that I was happy for him, that I knew what Ramadan was. And so uh, shout out to those who sense a spiritual time this, this, this season. Right. Well, yeah. it's a full month of Ramadan, and yeah. it's, it's wonderful Neat. for the it's Muslims. It, it, I'm but sure that it enhances spiritual their connection faith. is very important for all of us. And so here's to uh, spirituality and to the spiritual connection that we each find in our lives. Beautiful. Well, for any of you who listened earlier in the program, I want to remind you of Dr. Holmes' research project. He's tentatively calling it For Me. And if you're interested in becoming part of it, you should be either plus 65 years or overweight. If you're younger than 65, overweight, you'd be welcome to the program. You can call the Avira Medical Clinic Brookings and ask for Danelle Brown. And Danelle Brown will then uh, take your name and uh, bring you up to date on it. And uh, also to, uh, to remind everybody that uh, probably our best watchership is the summertime because almost all of the other shows are... You know, our kind of, it, summertime TV gets kind of bad, but our shows, it's a rerun. You had the best of but the best. But we have picked the very best. Except for tonight. Tonight is um, pledge. Pledge, pledge, night. pledge night, so there's no show tonight. Uh, tomorrow. So other Thursday, I mean tomorrow night. So, so there will be next week, but, not this week. Right, so remember, this summer, Thursday nights at 7, and we're running out of time. Yeah, we all we hope all of you have enjoyed our Prairie Doc radio program, and we'll listen again for Prairie Doc, brought to you by the Avera Medical Group Brookings. As always, you can hear and see more from Dr. Holm online at prairiedoc.org. Thank you for joining us today, and Rick, thank you. That's all till next week. Thank you, Joan. Thank you, Bob. Don't forget the uh, regatta at Lake Ponset, Pier 81, at 11, it starts at 11 uh, this Saturday. Thank you.